So later on in this book, we're going to find out that valence electrons play an important role in bonding. So an important question is going to be how many valence electrons does a particular atom have? In order to do this, we first need to define what is meant by a valence electron. And typically when we talk about valence electrons, we are looking at main group elements. We're not considering transition metals when we're doing this. And really we're counting the number of S and P electrons past the noble gas core of our electron configuration of our atoms. So it's kind of a mouthful, but when you look at the electron configuration of main group atoms, it's not that hard to count the number of valence electrons. So when we look at carbon and we want to know how many valence electrons does carbon have, you have helium as the noble gas core and you're just counting electrons past that. So there's two 2s electrons and two 2p electrons. So carbon has four valence electrons. Here, same thing for sulfur. We have two here and four here. So sulfur has six valence electrons. And it's so important that we actually are going to use an abbreviated form, a way of just looking at the periodic table and coming up with how many valence electrons something have. So we don't want to have to go and actually write out the whole electron configuration every time we ask the question of how many valence electrons does something have. Really what you do is you count left to right on the periodic table and you add one for each column and you jump over the transition metal. So anything in group one has one valence electron, group two has two valence electrons, and it continues on three, four, five, six, seven. Technically, uh, noble gases would have eight. So we can say without looking at the electron configuration, oxygen has six valence electrons, phosphorus has five valence electrons, boron has three valence electrons. So it's a, a much easier way of coming up with the number of valence electrons something has.